Okay, in this video we're going to be reviewing area and perimeter. Our first question consists of three questions. The first question is what is the perimeter of the rectangle? The perimeter is the distance around the outside of the shape. So to find the perimeter you have to ha add up all the sides of the shape. So in this rectangle we're going to add 30 plus 20 plus 30 plus 20 and that gives us the perimeter which is 100 feet. Our second question is if you shorten the long sides of the rectangle in order to change the shape into a square, what will be the perimeter? So if you look at our rectangle, they want us to shorten the long side. The long side is the side that's 30 feet long. They want us to shorten it to turn this rectangle into a square. A square has all the sides the same length, so that means that we have to shorten it from 30 feet to 20 feet so that all the sides will be 20 feet. So let's do that. So we shorten our rectangle to a square that has a length of 20 feet of each side. So now to find the perimeter, we're going to add 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20. So our perimeter is 80 feet. And now for our last question. By how many square feet did you shorten the perimeter? Okay, in order to find that, we have to take our original perimeter and subtract from it the shortened perimeter. So 100 feet minus 80 feet and that gives us an answer of 20 feet. We shortened the perimeter by 20 feet. Okay our next question. Each grid box represents one square foot. What is the area of the shape? Area is measuring the space inside of the shape. Perimeter measures the distance around the outside. The area is measuring the space inside of the shape. Um, now the easiest way, there's more than one way to do it. The way I recommend that you do this is to divide this shape into easy shapes like triangles and rectangles. You could do, there's other methods you could use as well, but I think that's the, the, the best way to keep it simple. Okay, so let's divide this shape into, uh, if you divide it like this, you'll have three triangles and one rectangle. Okay, so let's start by getting the area of the triangle on the top left. The base of that triangle is six units long and the height is also six units long and the formula for the area of a triangle is area equals one half base times height so we're gonna do one half times six times six and that's gonna give us an area of 18 square feet now let's do the rectangle in the middle the height is six and the base is gonna be seven and the formula for the area of a rectangle is area equals base times height so the area equals 7 times 6, and that gives us an area of 42 square feet. Now let's do the triangle on the right-hand side. The height is the same as the rectangle, so the height is 6, and the base is 3. And the formula for the area of a triangle is area equals 1 half base times height. So we're going to do 1 half times 3 times 6, so the area of that triangle is 9 square feet. Okay, now let's do the triangle on the bottom. Okay, when we add up... Uh, when we add up that line, we're going to get a base of 16 units, and the height of the triangle is 9. The formula for the area of a triangle is area equals 1 half times base times height, so we're going to do 1 half times 16 times 9, and that's going to give us an area of 36 square feet. Okay, now to get the area of that entire shape, what we're going to do is add up all of those numbers. So the area of the entire shape is going to be 18 plus 42 plus 9 plus 36, which gives us a total area of 105 square feet, and that is our answer. Okay, next Okay, for the next question, we have to find the perimeter. Round your answer to the nearest tenth. Remember, the perimeter is the distance around the outside of the shape. Now horizontal and vertical lines are very simple. All you have to do is count the number of squares. So let's leave that for last. Let's start by getting the length of the slanted lines. For slanted lines, you cannot count the squares. Uh, that doesn't work. You have to either use the distance formula or use the technique that I'm going to demonstrate in a moment. So let's start with the slanted line on the bottom of this trapezoid. What we're going to do is we're going to get the rise and the run from one point to the other point okay so the rise from from one point to the other point is seven and the run 
is going to be 6. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to get those two numbers. We're going to square each of them and add them together. We're going to square each of them and then add it together. And when we get the result, we're going to get the square root of the result. So we're going to do 7 to the second power plus 6 to the second power. And whatever that gives you, we're going to get the square root of that. Okay, so that's going to give us the square root of 85. Let's hold off on simplifying that square root. Let's just leave it in that form for now. So the length of that slanted line is square root of 85. Now let's calculate the length of the other slanted line at the top of the trapezoid. Okay, so the run is going to be 4 and the rise is also 4. So again, we're going to get those two numbers and we're going to square them and add them together. And then the result, we're going to get the square root of the result. So 4 to the second power plus 4 to the second power, that's 16 plus 16. So our distance is going to be the square root of 32. And again, let's hold off on simplifying that for now. Let's just leave it square root of 32. Okay, and then the horizontal line at the top has a distance of 2. And the vertical line on the bottom right has a distance of 3. Okay, so we're, get, we're going to get the perimeter by adding all four sides. Okay, so in a calculator, you're going to add all four of those numbers. Now, when you do the square root, the way you should enter it into your calculator is 2 plus 32 square root plus 3 plus 85 square root equals. So you always got to put the number before you hit the square root sign. All right, and when you do that, if you do it correctly, you're going to get, when you round your answer, you're going to get approximately 19.8. 876 um, and then it says round your answer to the nearest tenth so when we round that to our to the nearest tenth our final answer is going to be 19.9 units that's the perimeter of this shape okay moving on to the next question find the perimeter of a triangle with vertices at negative 300 comma 140 200 comma negative 350 and 100 comma 400 Run your answer to the nearest tenth. Okay, number one, first thing I want you to realize is you're given no picture for this problem. Okay, um, I highly recommend that you sketch out a picture. It'll make it much easier to visualize what we're doing. Okay, which is that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, if you try to, I don't know. I mean, you could do it like that without drawing a picture, but you'd have to use the distance formula. Um. It, it, I think it's, it makes it much more difficult to not have a picture. Okay, so let's sketch out a quick picture. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to be Picasso. You just have to do a rough sketch of where these points are going to be at and what the shape looks like. So let's do that. All right, so we start off with our coordinate grid here. Um, and let's put more or less where these points are going to be at. So we'll start with negative 3. Uh, I'm sorry, negative 300 on the x-axis, positive 140 on the y-axis. That's approximately right there. Then let's do positive 200 on the x-axis, negative 350 on the y-axis. And by the way, these lines, I'm, I'm treating them as if each one of these lines is 100, all right, measures one, 100 uh, units. So 100, 200, 300, 400, uh, that would make the most sense, I would think, all right, to minimize how much we have to draw. Okay, and for our last point, what, what, positive 100 on the x-axis and positive 400 on the y-axis is going to be approximately right there. Okay, so we have a triangle. All right, now let's use the same method I did on the previous uh, question to find the, because all of these lines are going to be slanted. All right, so let's use the same method I just used on the previous question to find the length of these slanted lines. Okay, so we're going to get the rise and the run. So let's start with the point on the top left and connect it to the point on the top right. All right, so the rise is the distance from one y-coordinate to the other y-coordinate. So the y-coordinates are going from 140 to 400. So what is the distance from 140 to 400? It's going to be 260. Now let's do the run. Okay, the run is going to be the distance from one x-coordinate to the other x-coordinate. So the x-coordinates are going from negative 300 to positive 100. That's a distance of 400. Okay, so now let's get both of those numbers. We're going to square them and add them together and then get the square root of the result. 
When you do that, you're going to get uh, the square root of 227,600. And on this one, I went ahead and simplified it. When you round your answer to the nearest hundredth, for now, um, you get 477.07. .07. The reason I rounded it to the nearest hundredth and not to the nearest tenth is because I want as much information as possible. Um, and I'll round it more, I'll round it to the nearest tenth when I get to my final answer. But if you round it uh, too early, you're cutting off uh, information and your answer might be slightly off. So I prefer to use as big a number as I can until I get to my final answer. So a reasonable number to round it to, in my opinion, would be 477.07. .07. All right, so the, the distance of that line is 477.07. .07. Okay, now let's connect the second point to the third point. Okay, so let's first get the rise, okay? So the rise is connecting one, going from one y-coordinate to the other y-coordinate. So what is the distance from negative 350 to positive 400? That's got to be 750 because from negative 350 to 0 is 350 and from 0 to 400 is 400. So when you add those two numbers, you get 750. Now let's calculate the run. The run is very short. Okay, The run is going from that x-coordinate, 100, to that x-coordinate, 200. So the distance from 100 to 200 is 100. Okay, now again, let's get those two numbers. We're going to square them and add them together. And we're going to, when we get the result, we're going to get the square root of the result. So that's going to give us the square root of 572,500, which uh, when you get the square root of that number, it's approximately 756.64. Again, for now, I'm rounding it to the nearest hundredth until I get to my final answer. So the length of that line or the length of that side is uh, 756.64. Now let's connect our last side. Uh, let's start with the run. Okay, so the run is gonna go from, is gonna be the distance from between these two x coordinates. It's going from negative 300 to positive 200. That's a distance of 500. And then now let's get the rise. The rise is going from negative 350 to positive 140. All right, so bit negative 350 to 0 is 350, and from 0 to 140 is 140. So really, all you got to do is add 350 plus 140. 350 plus 100 is 450, and 450 plus 40 more is 490. Okay, so let's get those two numbers. We're going to square them and add them, and when we get the result, we're going to get the square root of the result. And that's going to give us that the distance is the square root of 490,100, which is approximately 700.07. .07. Okay, now we're trying to find the perimeter. So the perimeter means we add the distance around the outside of the shape. So we have to add those three numbers that are in red. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, when we add those three numbers, we get 1,933.78. And it says round your answer to the nearest tenth. So that means our final answer is going to be 1,933.8. And that is the perimeter of the shape. Moving on to the next question. What is the area in square feet of the figure below? Okay, this is our the final question in this uh, video. And um, okay, so first thing I want you to notice is that up here, it has a little key that's telling us that the length of each uh, each unit is 500 feet. I'm going to deal with that at the end of my problem. So for now, I'm going to ignore that and we'll deal with that. I'll go over what that means at the end of this uh, problem. Okay, so the way I'm going to attack this problem, there's several ways that we could do it. I think the easiest way to do it is if you first um, get the area of the rectangle that exists, if you fill in that missing triangle that's missing in the shape. If you imagine that there's a triangle there, we could treat it as a rectangle. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the area of the rectangle first. And then once I have that, then I'm going to get the area of that little triangle on the bottom right. And then I, if I just subtract the two, that'll give me the area of the shape that I started with. Okay, so let's first calculate the area of the rectangle. Okay, the length of the base is 14 units and the height of the rectangle is 7 units. So to get the area of a rectangle, we're going to do base times height. So 14 times 7 gives us an area of 98 units. And that's the area of the entire rectangle. Okay, 
Now let's get the area of that triangle on the bottom right. Okay, the base of the triangle measures five units long and the height of the triangle also measures five units long. And the formula for the area of a triangle is one half times the base times the height. So one half times five times five, and that's gonna give us an area of 12.5 units. Now, to get the area of the shape that we're looking for, which is just the blue part, we have to subtract those two numbers, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, we're gonna do the area of the rectangle minus the area of the triangle. So 98 minus 12.5 gives us an area of 85.5 units. Okay, so the blue shape has an area of 85.5 units. But now, let's deal with, um, let's deal with this information right here. Let me explain what this means because this is very easy to get confused by or to mess up. And uh, there's a good chance that if you do it the wrong way, one of the answer choices will be that the wrong way of doing it. Okay, so, so this will unlock the mystery be, be behind how to do this question, right? So let's look at what this means. What this means is the following. Each square unit on this grid has a length of 500 feet. Now, if it's a square, that means that all sides are the same length. So if the, if the base is 500, that means that the height is 500 as well. So that means that each one of these square units has an area of 500 times 500. All right, 500 feet times 500 feet. So each square unit equals 250,000 square feet. Yes, that's a big number, and when we use it in a moment, we're going to get a big answer. So don't be surprised by that. Okay, but that's what that key means. All right, that means that each square unit is 500 by 500, which gives us that each square unit equals 250,000 square feet. And again, I got that by multiplying 500 by 500. All right, so going back to our problem, okay, the uh, area of the blue shape is 85.5 units. But we got to put our answer in square feet. So what I'm going to do is multiply 85.5 by 250,000 square feet since each one of those uh, each one of those squares equals 250,000 square feet and there's 85.5 of them in that shape. So when I multiply that, I'm going to get my final answer. The area equals 21,375,000 square feet. Yes, again, that is a big number. Sometimes you get big numbers in math, all right? So don't be surprised if when you're doing a problem like this, you get an answer that big. That doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong, all right? So be aware of that and be aware of what that key means because uh, you may see that on your final exam, okay? And that wraps up this video. And again, keep subscribing to my channel so that uh, you can check out the latest videos that I'm going to keep uploading them to review for your final exam on geometry.